Hello everybody, um, this is Grady with Skitoid Gaming. Uh, I'm recording with the microphone on the webcam, so I hope that the sound quality is okay. I understand it's probably going to cut out here and there, um, and I'm sorry for that. I just I don't particularly feel like getting the, uh, the microphone out just to, to do this little video here. Um, You've probably noticed that uh, I've not been uploading videos with the same regularity that I was before, and uh, it's it's not that I've been upset or anything like that. You know, it's not that I've been uh, frustrated with anything. Um, it's just that I've been really, really obscenely busy. Um, work has taken up almost all of my life for the past week and a big part of the reason for that is that I'm going to be out of town um, starting tomorrow so uh, starting Friday I will be out of town I will be in Albuquerque tomorrow and uh, then on Saturday I fly out to Seattle uh, to meet up with some friends and uh, go to a convention so, I won't be here, so I've been a little overly burdened with work to try and catch up, um, try and make sure everything is good before I leave, and uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to actually finish everything. There are a few things that we still need to do. Um, in particular, one of our older customers has come back, um, which we're thrilled about. I mean, really, we are. Uh, we at the observatory are happy to have him back. Uh, he, he's a great guy. He knows what he's doing, so it usually doesn't call on us to <laughs> to do anything else for him um, once he gets up and running. But of course, we haven't gotten him up and running yet, and a uh, big part of the reason for that is he is one of like five installs that we have to do in the next month. And uh, he only showed up about three days ago um, saying, hey, you know, do you have uh, equipment and space? And we said, yeah, we do. Um, for those of you who don't know what I do, because I don't think I've ever actually explained it on the channel, um, I work at an observatory. I am the cheek <laughs> wow. chief technology officer at New Mexico Skies Observatories in May Hill, New Mexico. Um, what that means... Oh, hi, Toulouse. Hey, bud. I'm gonna miss him for the next couple of days. Um, what that means is that I create telescope systems for clients. I uh, develop new systems for clients in some cases and uh, excuse me and in, in, in all cases I uh, maintain their telescope systems while they're here uh, New Mexico Skies Observatory New Mexico Skies Observatory is a privately owned uh, observatory that rents space for telescopes um You know, so people can set up their telescopes here and be able to access them from home, um, wherever home might be. We've got clients in Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Australia, you know, countless places in the U.S. We've got uh, NASA is one of our clients. Um, if you've heard of him, and if you follow astronomy, you probably have lately. Uh, certainly if you follow golf, you've heard of him lately. Uh, Jimmy Walker has a telescope here. Um, oh, great. Now you're doing the flashy thing. Come on. What is there to flash about? Okay, I figured this off out. It's a light balance thing. Um, it doesn't like... I mean, you, you can tell my face is not very well lit, you know. And that doesn't help. Uh, 
because I was trying this before and it's just it's not helping but uh, that's why it doesn't anyway uh, Rob Gendler was a client of ours for a long time um, and the only reason he stopped is because he started using uh, the Hubble archive uh, to process his images which is fantastic I'm, I'm really happy for him that he's able to do that um, anyway, so we've, we've got a large number of clients who have their telescopes hosted here because uh, certainly in the continental U.S. and possibly in the entire U.S., uh, except for maybe some places in Alaska, we are one of the darkest skies in existence. We are certainly the darkest sky in the continental U.S. Um, and in addition to having the darkest sky, we have some of the clearest skies as well, which is obviously a consideration. Um, so, we get a lot of big, you know, high-profile clients. Uh, if you've heard of the Dragonfly Telescope, they're hosted here. Um, the Dragonfly Telescope, they did... Uh, they discovered seven new galaxies in the vicinity of M101, and then they discovered 47 new large galaxies in the uh, Comma Cluster, which is very impressive considering, you know, these are places where we've been doing research for a long, long time, and they found galaxies that we didn't know about. Uh, you know, not just any galaxies, galaxies that are huge in size, uh, as large as the Milky Way, uh, which is just massive. And we haven't been able to see it before, and we are able to see it now because of the, the Dragonfly telephoto array. Um, so anyway, that that's what we do, is we set up telescopes, maintain telescopes. Uh, some of us do a little bit of imaging on the side, uh, I do personally. Um, yeah, I borrow some of our own equipment, none of, none of the clients' equipment, but some of our own equipment because uh, my my employer uh, owns a few telescopes of his own, and you know, so we set some of those up for for personal use, and that's that's why he has them is for personal use. So yeah, anyway, it, it's so we can get a better idea of the sorts of needs our clients have. Um, so right now, like I said, we've got five brand new installations uh, coming up in the next month. Um, two of them are huge. I mean, larger than anything we've ever done before. And uh, I'm really excited about that. But, uh, and then two of them, probably more than that, but Two of them are with uh, a client of ours who, he, you know, he's he's been here for many years, um, and uh, I'm not going to divulge any more information about him. Suffice to say, uh, he's planning on setting up a large number of telescopes that uh, we're going to have to figure out places to go and uh, how to get them to work because a lot of the stuff is uh, stuff that probably won't work. Um, we also have a site in Australia, and I've been working uh, night and day to uh, maintain our site here and also our site in Australia because we've had a few complaints, uh, well, a few service calls uh, from our clients down in Australia. It's a sister site. It's called uh, Riverland Dingo Observatory. Uh, it's in Morook, which is, I want to say it's like an hour, hour and a half uh, uh, east, excuse me, east of Adelaide, um, out in the boonies, I mean, you know, when, you, when you're talking about Australia, th there's, there are cities, and then there are the boonies, and this is the boonies, for sure, um, but that's why we've got a, a setup there, that, that's why we've got a site there, um, but it's some of our clients who are also hosted there, um, have had service complaints or service requests there as well. So, uh, 
yeah, we've, we've been dealing with that, too. Um, oh, God, what else? Well, it just as a result of all of this, because I've been working literally night and day, I just I haven't had the time to upload the videos. I actually, I do have them. Uh, I have them ready to go. I just need to actually upload them and uh, create slate cards for them and all that, and I just, I haven't done it yet. So that's that's what's going on. Um, and more than likely, while I'm in Seattle, I'm going to have a few service calls there um, just because I have the ability to do that, you know, to work on systems that are here from the state of Washington, you know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's a little ridiculous what, what we're capable of in this day and age. But uh, th that's that's exactly why we exist, is to, to take care of that. And, of course, the... <sighs> Come on, stupid freaking thing. There we go. Like I said, it's a light balance issue. Um, it's because I'm wearing black. Computer screen to my right is black. The uh, sheets to my left are black. So... You know, everything is black, and uh, what little light there is, is coming from directly above onto my oily-ass face. Um, so, you get a lot of light from here, and very little from anywhere else, except now I've got a pillow over here, too. Um, you know. So, that's what's been going on. Um, I do... I've actually finished Illusion of Gaia. I have the end... The finale episode recorded. It's ready to go. Like I said, I just need to upload it. Um, it may go up before I get back. Um, I just, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, it, if it ends up that I have a day or two while I'm gone where I don't have any episodes uploaded... Um, and you've seen the finale of Illusion of Gaia, it's because I don't have any more episodes. Um, I have nothing else recorded. I, uh, I spent so much time uh, putting together the end of Illusion of Gaia. I mean, literally, I spent the entirety of Thursday last week playing that game. And I love it. You know, I love that game. I really do. Um, well, I say I spent the entirety of the day last Thursday doing it, but that's not actually true. I spent about two hours at work, because even though Thursday was my night off, um, shit hit the fan. And so I had to come in and fix some stuff. Uh, and we got it fixed, so good news there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I spent about two hours at work in the middle of my uh, Illusion of Gaia marathon. Uh, so, I spent almost all of Thursday playing that game uh, to get it finished, to get it finally done. Um, and again, not because I don't like playing it. I love playing that game. I really do. Uh, part of it was because I really wanted to, really wanted to try to beat uh, Solid Arm, who is, spoiler alert, the... Uh, secret boss in the game and I've never been able to beat him and I t this was no exception I wasn't able to beat him I tried like 12 times to beat him and I just couldn't so I didn't <laughs> um, there's nothing special if you beat him it's just the satisfaction of knowing that you beat him um, but it's just it's so hard to beat this boss so I, I didn't do it um but you'll see that you'll you'll we'll we'll get to that. Um, but anyway, it, because I spent so much time trying to do that, and so much time at work, um, all I had time to do was Illusion of Gaia. I I didn't finish playing the game until about two in the morning on Friday, um, which of course meant that I didn't have any time to do anything else. Uh, I do intend when I get back. Um, the first game I'm going to play when I get back is probably going to be Metroid Prime. Uh, you know, I started it over a year ago, and I just sort of stopped because 
Well, there, there was some interest in it, but all of the interest, the, the vast majority of the interest that I was getting was for Star Fox Adventures. So I wanted, you know, I wanted to to go with where the, the desire was. Uh, so I did. And uh, I still don't want to go back to playing that game. So we're going to we're going to play a little bit more Metroid Prime. Um and uh, one of these days I'm going to probably turn on Star Fox Adventures and say, you know, let's let's just go through this off camera, beat this really really hard part. And uh I mean, you know, the the thing is um I do remember and I know I said this about the the space before, uh but once you beat the, the mini-game that I was having trouble with in, at the end of the last episode in Star Fox Adventures, you go to uh, the Earthwalker uh, City, I think is what they actually called it, the, the Earthwalker City. So, you know, Tricky's home area. Uh, and it's actually, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Um, you know, you, you have to use the power up that you get, or I think you get it. No, no, no. no. Okay, you you get a new power up when you go there, and you use that power up to kill Tyrannosaurus Rexes, which is, you know, it's like oh my god, and and you you do you kill them, um. And it's extremely difficult and extremely challenging, but it's not frustratingly difficult. It's fun difficult, which is a big difference. Um, one of the games that I'd really like to play uh, eventually at some point is uh, I'd really like to play the in excuse me the entire uh, Legend of Spyro series. And if you've ever played the Legend of Spyro series, you know um, the first game. It's kind of repetitive, but, you know, it, it, to me anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, especially when you get to the end game and you uh, get the new game plus and can go through the entire game with all your breath weapons. Uh, it's just, it becomes immensely fun. But, um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh... Uh, Legend of Spyro the Eternal Knight, which is the second game in the series. They're, they're, it's a trilogy. Um, Eternal Knight is balls hard. I mean, it is the one of the hardest games I've ever played. Um, and I've played Takeshi's Challenge. This game is hard. Um... You know, it's what people call Nintendo hard. It is. It's absolutely Nintendo hard. Um, but it's fun hard. It's not frustrating hard. And this is a big thing because the jump between Eternal Night and Dawn of the Dragon, which is the final game of the trilogy, um, they changed publishers, they changed uh, the whole game mechanic... Um, they changed most of the voice actors. It just, it was like, why did you do this? But, it, it th there was some issues with uh, Chrome Studios, I understand. I, I don't know what the issues were, but there were issues with Chrome Studios, and they just, um, Sierra wanted to go a different route, so they went with, uh, the publisher they went with for the, the Dawn of the Dragon. Uh, this publisher is known in Europe, but not really in the States, um, except for Dawn of the Dragon. They produced uh, the Asterix and Obelix series of games in Europe, um, which, if you've ever played them, they're actually a lot of fun, but they're completely different games. So, um, Dawn of the Dragon turned out really, really bad compared to the, the other two games, and uh, there's one point in the game where I actually did rage quit, um, and I've I've never beaten that game. So, you know, eventually I might get around to playing those games as well. But the whole point I was trying to make here is, um, I can enjoy 
difficult games. I can enjoy challenging games. And from what I remember, the Earthwalker City um, is challenging. It's difficult, but it's not frustrating. And so it's actually a lot of fun. Um, the boss fight that occurs there, uh, you see the opening cutscene for the boss fight in the opening cutscene for the game. Uh, it's a gigantic... It, I think it's called the King Rex. And uh, he's got a spellstone in his head. And so you have to... Act, you do actually have to kill him to get the spellstone. Um, and it's... It's hard. I mean, I remember the first time I played that boss, uh, I raged. I did. But it's... When you figure out how to how to beat him, it's like, oh my god, how did I... And, and Well, it, it's one of those... And, and this is a problem I've noticed with Star Fox Adventure since I started replaying it again um, for the channel. It's... There are portions of this game that, if you don't have a walkthrough, are literally impossible to figure out. It's just, you can't do it without a walkthrough. Um, you know, the portions of the Lightfoot Village, I remember when I f was first playing this game and playing that section of the game, and I was like, you know, I have to be doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? And so I finally did. I caved and I looked at a walkthrough, and it's like, no, you're actually doing everything exactly right. It's just balls hard. Um... <laughs> you know, so I kept doing it and kept doing it, and finally I did beat it. Um, but there were other parts, like the uh, the Earthwalker City. When you're defeating all these T Rexes, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, literally, you don't know how to do it. They don't explain it to you. They don't tell you what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you you get the power up for the staff that allows you to defeat them. Um, but even then, it's actually non-intuitive how to use it to defeat them. You, you can't just... Because what it is, it's it's an upgraded uh, ground pound. So the, the earthquake move that allowed you to kill the, uh, the weirdos on, in Moon Mountain Pass um, gets an upgrade. And this upgrade... Uh, makes it a lot more powerful but of course it does have to charge a little longer and um, one, if you don't charge it long enough, it doesn't do a thing and two uh, if you don't jump off of ledges it also doesn't do a thing so you know, even though you got the power up and you're using the power-up exactly the way you would expect to have to be able to use it, you can't. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, it just, it, excuse me, I, I'm, I'm having a lot of uh, gastrointestinal distress lately, uh, mostly because I'm excited about this trip, uh, and also because I've been working so hard. So I've, I've been uh, really pushing myself, and also because uh, this is something I've, I've been meaning to talk about, too. I think I've mentioned it in one of my episodes, but I, I don't really remember. Um, I've subscribed to a service called Blue Apron that uh, sends you ingredients and recipes for three meals uh, for two people once a week uh, for a fee. And, I mean, it, it's a... It's like a $60 fee per week, uh, which is a lot until you realize that the food is enough to feed one person for that entire week. So it's like, oh, well, okay, you know, that's actually kind of nice. And it's convenient because I don't have to drive all the way down to Alamogordo, which is an hour drive away, um, before I can uh, get food. You know, I can, I can have food delivered here through this service. Um, and they've, this week, every single dish they served had corn in it. And I, you know, yes, 
the gastrointestinal problem is related to corn and related to the fact that corn doesn't get digested when it goes into your system. Um, the fact is, I have diverticulitis. Well, diverticulosis, but right now it's diverticulitis because all those undigested corn kernels are swimming around in my intestines and getting caught in the diverticula and causing infections, which is what diverticulitis is. It's infections in the lower intestine as a result of stuff catching on these diverticula. Um, it's really bad with sesame seeds and corn and nuts, uh, rye, any whole grains I have to try and avoid. Um, just because it, they do, they wreak havoc on my on my intestines, and as a result, um, you know it it destroys me. It's it's not just a uh, well. I'm gonna go out, I, go ahead and come out and say it. It's not just a poop thing. It's um, I mean, yeah, it causes diarrhea, but it also causes extreme weakness and cramping and pain and it just it it's all around highly unpleasant um, and unfortunately Blue Apron doesn't have a way to tell them yeah hey I have diverticulitis I really do have special dietary needs um, you know if, if you have uh, certain dietary needs like uh, if you if you're celiac disease, or, uh, you know, if you can't eat fish, or if you can't eat meat at all, for whatever reason, um, you, you can specify those sorts of things, but you can't tell them, for example, that you, you know, have diverticula, um, or that, like, my sister is, uh, highly allergic to uh, red onions. Can't tell them that, <laughs> you know. Um, if you're allergic to shellfish, you have to say you don't want any fish. You can't just say, I don't want any shellfish. You have to say, I don't want any fish, period. Um, you know, which is asinine. And quite frankly, the, ser the, the quality of the food that they've delivered is really not up to par. It's just... You know, it, it's like you can tell they're trying, but, and I know a large part of the problem is, you know, Blue Apron, when it started as a service, it started uh, doing hand deliveries of food um, in New York and San Francisco. So it's like, you know, big cities where there are genuine cooks, you know, a, a true culinary environment um, where they can guarantee the quality of the goods that are being delivered to you directly to you by their delivery men. Um, you know, and in such a situation, I can imagine it would have been fantastic, but, you know, as is, because they've started doing this nationwide thing, um, they've partnered with FedEx to deliver, which is fine if they want to use FedEx, you know, whatever, um, but as a result, also, they have to have kitchens in cities nearer to their clientele. So the kitchen that services our area is in Dallas, Texas. At least I think it's in Dallas. Uh, it might be in Houston, but I'm pretty sure it's in Dallas. Um, and there's just, there's not a cooking scene in Dallas. I mean, yeah, you can go to Dallas and get a job as a cook, but, you know, are you going to open a five-star restaurant in downtown Dallas? Probably not. <laughs> you know? It's just there's nothing there for food. And so, the, the kitchen that they have uh, that Blue Apron uses in Dallas, Texas is not doing a very good job of delivering the kind of quality I expect they intended to deliver. Um, the big thing, the, the, the biggest problem so far, by far, is portions. Um, the, the, the portion control 
out of Dallas is just awful. And I'm not saying, like, you know, they provide you too much food. It's that they provide the wrong amount of certain kinds of food. So uh, produce usually is the culprit, and they will just pile on mountains and mountains and mountains of the largest frigging produce you've ever seen for a recipe that calls for, you know, a half of a normal-sized zucchini, you know? It's like, Jesus Christ! And, and you know, for example, um, one of the dishes this week was uh, pork ramen, uh, fresh pork ramen, and, uh, it was good. I mean, it, it wasn't great, but it, it was pretty good. Um, the spices they used were were actually pretty good. Uh, they used too much corn. They did use corn, which is a big no-no for ramen. It's just, you don't put corn in ramen. It doesn't belong there. Um, but also, uh, there wasn't enough broth. The, the recipe called for two cups of broth across two servings of ramen noodles, which, if you know how ramen works, you actually need four cups of broth for two servings of ramen. Um, so it just, there wasn't nearly enough broth. And uh, one of the things they uh, provided for the recipe was eggplant. Um, I don't like eggplant, so I didn't prepare it, and it's just as well because the eggplant went bad in the fridge anyway. Um, but they, uh, they provided a huge eggplant. Like, the, the way the recipe calls for the preparation of the eggplant is, uh, cut it into slices, like, I think it's quarter inch, maybe half inch thick, and, uh, fry them on a medium-sized pan. And, uh my employers, who actually got me started on it, were like, dude, the eggplant they sent us, um, with the size, the, the thickness of the slices that we were told to use, um, using the largest pan we had, required three full rotations of that pan to cook all of the eggplant that was given to us. It just, it was way too big. Um, way too much. And uh, one of the other things, one of the other dishes that was given to us this week was uh, pan-seared cod with uh, summer succotash. And uh, succotash, if you don't know, it's uh, corn and green beans and tomato and garlic and shallot. Um, the shallot that they gave me was about as large as my head. Not joking, that's, that's actually how big the shallot was. Uh, I've never seen a shallot nearly that large, and uh, the tomato they provided was uh, about as large as my clenched fist, which is way too much tomato, considering they only gave me a single cob of corn and half a pound of green beans. It just, it the, the proportions were wrong. Um, so I ended, up, I ended up having to throw half the tomato away, um, and I threw almost all of the shallot away. I, I felt really bad because I never use shallot and uh, won't be starting now because it actually it didn't really taste very good. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't bad. Um, but the succotash, it, it just, it wasn't right. So, I don't know. Um, but as a result of that, because every single dish this week involved corn, my insides are a mess, and so I'm a mess as as a result. Um, you know, so in addition to being excited about this trip, uh, I have bowel distress, <laughs> um, which I know is way more than you wanted to know, but it's it's the truth, you know. Um, and what really sucks is I went on the same trip last year. And the same exact thing happened. In fact, last year it was so sudden and so bad that that's what actually uh, incited me to go to a gastroenterologist in the first place. And that's where I was di diagnosed with the diverticula. Um, they were like, you know, what did you eat on this trip? I was like, uh, sesame chicken. 
an awful lot of sesame chicken. And they're like, yeah, that, that'll do it. <laughs> you, uh, you're going to have to lay off the sesame chicken. All right. <laughs> Sorry, the, the cat is freaking out because it, talking to somebody who isn't here, he doesn't like that. Um, so I've been rambling now for 35 minutes. Uh, I guess I really ought to stop. It's 11.30 at night. I have to be on the road. Uh, or I'd, I'd like to be on the road by 8.30 in the morning um, because I'd like to be able to get to Albuquerque with enough time to actually do stuff. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this in any of the uh, previous episodes, but uh, the reason I'm going to Albuquerque today, or tomorrow, rather, I'm really tired. The reason I'm going to Albuquerque tomorrow is uh, I'm going to a concert. It's a Def Leppard, Styx, and Tesla concert. If you've been following any of that stuff, you know they've been doing a tour across the country uh, together. And so the tour is in Albuquerque tomorrow, and I got tickets very early on. Um, I'm almost front row. I I'm actually in the seventh row from the front, which is... Uh, if you've ever been to Isleta Amphitheater, it's huge. Uh, seventh row is the front. Uh, you know, seventh row is, as they would call it at SeaWorld, the splash zone. Uh, so I'm going to be deaf on Saturday, uh, but uh, I'm going to be partying my ass off on Friday, and I really will be. It'll be a blast. Um... Oh, I think that's all I'm going to have to talk about because uh, I'm actually getting distracted by what's on the TV. That What's here, this is a TV, but there's another TV over here that's actually plugged into the satellite. So I'm, I'm kind of distracted by what's going on on that TV. I was curious as to what that commercial was about. I don't know. Um, I do not know. And I probably won't find out because it looked too interesting to have a second ad. Um... If you know me, you know that uh, the things I'm interested in, the moment you air more than one ad for them, um, I lose all interest. I just, it's like, nope, you tried too hard to sell it to me. Bye, you know. <laughs> um, it really is. It's that bad. Uh, anyway. So, now that I've rambled and rambled and rambled and rambled and talked about stuff that's going on with the channel and what's going on with my life. Um, I just, I wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on because you deserve it. Um, I've been, I haven't uploaded anything for the past two days and uh, that hopefully will change. I'm going to, as soon as I get done recording this, I'm going to start uploading a few new episodes um, when I get to Albuquerque uh, assuming I have any time at all in the motel room that I'm going to be staying in, um, I will try and access this computer and upload a few more episodes. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to try, but uh, it may not happen. But, you know, this is, again, to, to let you know what's going on and why that may not happen. So, in any event, that I've got a cat in my lap. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I would not be doing this if it weren't for people who might actually be interested in watching. Um, and until next time, I will see you guys later.